Wow, now we can see the countdown clock. I don't think we can see it before, but we can see it now. <laughs> We still have 30 seconds. Okay. Just... Oh, we're live. Hello. <laughs> Good. Sorry about that. Well, we actually are supposed to wait uh, to have people log in. So um, if you're joining us, thank you so much. This is Safe Kids Worldwide for our Facebook Live. And if you wouldn't mind, just share in a comment where you're from. Um, hi, I'm Carrie from Safe Kids. I am based on the East Coast, uh, so I'm in DC. Jessica, where are you from? Hi, everybody. I am in Tucson, Arizona. Nice and hot there, right? It is very warm, hence why we are doing this inside today. <laughs> that sounds good. You may recognize Jessica from two days ago when she did our Facebook Live on rear-facing seats. And her phone heated up and stopped working. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> we're doing here. So um, we are going to wait just a little bit, a few more seconds for people to join in. We're going to be talking today with Jessica Mitchell about booster seats, which is great. Um, what's your favorite part of a booster? Mine's the label for sure. <laughs> so my favorite part of a booster seat is cup holders. You can never have too many cup holders because not only do kids stash their drinks there, but they like to stash everything else. Yeah. All right. All right. So if you're joining us in Facebook Live Land, let us know where you're from and if you have a favorite part of a booster seat. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, again, hi, my name is Carrie. I'm from Safe Kids Worldwide, and we are delighted that you have joined us today for today's uh, Facebook Live on boosters. Uh, Jessica, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Awesome. So again, my name is Jessica Mitchell. I work um, for Tucson Medical Center and Safe Kids Pima County. So I'm down here in nice, warm, sunny Tucson, Arizona. I have been um, a car seat technician, sorry, child passenger safety technician for six years and an instructor for five years. And this really has become a passion of mine. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so let's talk a little bit about booster seats. When would you move a child from, let's say, a forward facing seat with the harness into a booster seat? So moving a child from a forward facing seat into a booster seat, we really want to wait as long as possible to take that child out of a booster seat. We want them to outgrow that forward facing harness by either weight or height limit before we think about moving them to a booster seat. Um, minimum, I would say for a booster seat is about the age of five, but ultimately if we can wait longer before we move them, it is the safest thing for them. So there's not really a, a golden height where a kid will definitely be able to fit um or height or weight when they're definitely able to move from a forward facing seat to a har from a harness to a booster seat. It depends on the kid. And I guess it also depends on the car seat that they're currently using. Exactly. It does depend on the car seat. A lot of forward facing car seats nowadays do go up to at least 65 pounds and then like around 52 inches for height. Um, and so moving them into a booster seat, we really want them to hit those limits first. However, booster seats do have the stickers that do tell you the minimum height and weight that a child does have to be for those but it's really waiting to make sure that they're old enough to have their skeletal structure nice and strong so that way they can handle those forces when they do sit in a booster seat versus a car seat. Well, um, show me how you put a kid on a booster seat. I see you have a model with you uh, today who can is, show us a little bit Betty. more. Yep, so Miss Betty is going to hey, Betty. You how, how to sit in a booster seat. Um, so putting a child in a booster seat is pretty easy. You simply put the booster seat in the vehicle, put the child on the booster seat, and then you want to buckle them in. When you buckle the child in, you want to make sure that the lap belt goes over their nice strong hips and the shoulder belt over their shoulders. Um, you don't want the shoulder belt sitting up at their neck or anything like that. You also want to make sure that the shoulder belt is underneath the booster seat arm. You do not want it like this. So you want mm -mm. it to go nice and under. Um, mm -hmm. But this is it's pretty easy to put a child in the booster seat. So it looks like that's the way my seatbelt should fit me. Yes, we definitely want our seatbelts, um, kids and adults, to hit our hips and our shoulders. These are the strongest parts of our bodies. Huh. So basically, you're making sure that the seatbelt um, is low and snug across their hips and upper thighs, and then the shoulder belt is directly across their chest. What happens if the seatbelt doesn't fit correctly? Can they go ahead and just put it under their arm or behind their back just to get it out of the way? 
No. So there are times when if for some reason the, the seatbelt does hit the child's neck, they may try to put it behind their back or underneath their other armpit like this. This is not okay because now that child has lost that upper body protection um, and they're going to be at risk for a lot more serious injuries. Okay. Well, um, I know that there's a couple types of booster seats. It looks like you have one. Does that have a back on it or is it backless? And can you tell me when parents or caregivers might choose one over the other? Perfect. So this booster seat is a backless booster seat. Um, there are other types out there. The other one is what we call a high back booster. It, again, as its name, it has a back to it. Um, so for a backless booster seat, in order to use it, your vehicle seating position where that child's going to be sitting has to have a headrest behind them. If you do not have a headrest in that seating position, that's when we need to have that child in a high back booster. Um, another uh, reason parents might choose a high back booster over a backless booster is high back boosters have shoulder belt guides built in that help make sure that you get a nice good fit with that shoulder belt sitting right on the shoulder. Oh, okay. So is one kind safer than the other? As long as the child meets the height and weight limits for either booster seat, no, they're both equally oh. safe. Well, that's good to know. Thanks, Jessica. Um, let's see if we have some questions from the audience. Um, if you do have a question, please put it in a comment. When can my child ride in the front passenger seat? So we do not want kids in the front passenger seat until they're at least 13 years old. And this is due to the front airbag. It comes out at such an extreme force that our younger kids cannot handle those forces. So 13 is the recommended age to put a child in the front seat. Yeah, and I, I think I read that that was because almost all kids at that age are big enough to correctly use an adult seatbelt and emotionally ready to stay in position. Correct. And there's, I always like to add that the skeletal structure is nice and strong to also handle those forces. Oh, great tip. Good tip, Jessica. That's great. You know, when we talk about booster seats, the, the first question that I know we always get is, when do they outgrow a booster seat? How do you know when they can use a regular I'm going to say adult seatbelt because it, it really is made for adults and adult men, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, so cars were built for adults. So we always have to do things to um, provide things for our children to keep them safe. And so with the seatbelt, when a child can get out of a booster seat is once they hit four foot nine. Um, a lot of laws will say, you know, at the age of eight or something in that sense. But four foot nine is our magic number because that's when a person, a child is tall enough to fit in the seatbelt correctly in most vehicles. And what I mean by correctly is that it crosses their hips and it crosses their shoulders, um, like on Miss Betty here. So four foot nine is that magic number. And most kids uh, don't reach that until they're about 10 to 12 years old. Yeah, well, it sounds like from what you're saying that, you know, it really does depend on the kid and depends on the car. And so you really can't tell until you put them on a vehicle seat and see if the adult belts fit correctly. Correct. And I mean, there's a couple other things that you want to look for besides just the seatbelt fit when you're taking a child out of a booster seat. You want to make sure that their knees bend comfortably at the vehicle seat and that their feet can touch the floor. If their knees don't bend, they will actually get uncomfortable and they will scooch themselves forward to make their knees bend. And so when that happens, that seatbelt actually rides up onto their stomach and their neck, taking it out of that position that we're really looking for. Yeah, that sounds really dangerous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have a question from Jenny. She says, um, can you explain about the strap that sometimes hangs off the front of a booster seat and what the function is? I can't really think of a strap off the front, but what's the strap off the back? I can show you Unless you have a, one on your seat, we can show in the front. Sometimes this, that maybe that's in a, a release for the lower anchors. Um, Jenny, the best thing to do is to look in the owner's manual. It will tell you exactly what it is for that seat because um, you know, we know that there are so many kinds of car seats and so many um, brands and types out there that there's going to be a different feature on every seat. And honestly, as soon as we air this, there probably will be a new seat with a new feature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So on this booster seat, it does come with a strap on the back of it. What this okay. strap does, it is a shoulder belt guide. So this may not be exactly what Jenny is talking about, but I have noticed a lot of um, low back or no back boosters are coming with these. And what it is, is you simply route the shoulder strap, strap through this guide. You okay. snug it down and it's going to help make sure that that shoulder strap fits on that child's shoulder properly. Okay. Well, Jenny, if that doesn't answer your question, please go ahead and, and give us a little more information. 
Um, we do know that manuals and the car seat manufacturers are the best source for the information. Um, we do have another question that's submitted. Are all boosters the same for safety? As long as the child meets the, the minimum height and weight limit or it falls underneath the maximum, yes, it's going to keep your child um, just as safe as any other booster seat. All right. And um, I'm going to give you a, a kudos, Jessica. That was actually Jenny's question. She is all set. So, yay. Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, if we have any more questions, um, we will definitely share them. Oh, wait, here's a good one. What is a good booster for a 10 year old who is 80 pounds? She's four foot 11. And that's from Rebecca, who's joining us live right now. So once the child hits four foot nine, they usually do not need a booster seat anymore because that's when the seatbelt should fit them properly. Um, so you really want to look at the height and weight limits of certain booster seats. Most of them do go to over 100 pounds, but a lot of them do stop once at that four foot nine inches, which is 50 or four. Yeah, four feet, nine inches um, is usually the maximum height for a booster seat. So it sounds like if she has a booster, she should just check the labels and see what the height and weight limits are and go ahead and, and, and use it until her child can correctly fit an adult belt. And as right. we just learned, um, it just depends on the vehicle too. So exactly. you might have a vehicle like a, a giant, you know, Chevy something with a SUV where the seatbelt is really high, or you might have a little tiny car where it's a little bit lower. So um, I guess it's one of those try before you buy kinds of things. You can see if they fit well. Um, what if my booster has been in a crash? That's a great question. Thank you for asking it. So for any car seat or booster seat that's been in a crash, I always suggest to call the uh, the car seat manufacturer because they know their seats the best. Um, and so if you give them a call, their phone numbers are on the stickers with the manufacturer date and just talk to them, let them know what's going on and they can give you the best advice. Well, that sounds good. That sounds great. And I guess if they need a new one, they can put it in with their insurance, just like everything else. They're, they're paying yes, their a deductible. Lot of, a lot of insurance will cover the purchase of a new car seat or booster seat. Sounds great. Um, can you talk a little bit about counterfeit car seats? That's from Safe Kids Greater South Haven. Ooh, I don't know too much about counterfeit okay. car seats. I do know they're out there, um, and I know that we're working on trying to get them off the market. Um, but yeah, parents do need to be careful with counterfeit car seats. Um, if it looks too, if the price looks too good to be true, that's definitely <laughs> a giveaway. And then you always want to make sure that you know if there's labels, there's lower anchors because a lot of counterfeit car seats do not provide those types of things that are that are safety standards that we have to have on our seats. Look, so you did, that's excellent information. So, um, and you know, labels, I've already confessed that they're my favorite part of a booster seat. So if you do wanna check for labels, make sure that it says that it meets federal safety standards. And, and you know what, that was a great call. If the price is too good to be true, it probably is too good to be true. Yeah. Well, we've talked a lot about um, booster seats today. Um, we've had a really great CPS week. We've had Facebook Lives on rear facing, forward facing. We've had technical issues where your phone died. And then this morning, I didn't realize we were live. So surprise. <laughs> oh, wait, we have one more question. Let's go ahead and take this question. Um, how do I convince my child to stay in a booster seat? That's a hard one. Um, you can simply talk to your child about why a booster seat is so important, how it keeps them safe. Um, you can sometimes get the help of law enforcement to help convince them. Um, it's just finding that communication tool that works best with your child. Yeah, and you know, one thing that, um, that I've heard from other technicians as well is that always ask who they ride with because if a child suddenly um, stops wanting to be on their booster seat, maybe they're with an adult who doesn't ride buckled up so they're not seeing that good behavior. Um, or that they're not getting that solid messaging. So that's a really great tip. And with that, it could be, you know, maybe ask them why they want to get out of the booster seat. Is it because their friends, you know, are seeing it? Maybe mm -hmm. they're making fun of them. And there are other booster seats that are a little bit more low profile that are not as obvious that kids can move into that keep them just as safe. Yeah. So maybe like the one you're showing, they might move from a high back booster to a backless booster. Exactly. Yeah. That's a good pro tip. Um, well, anyway, Jessica, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, it's been a, a real joy, a real pleasure. I hope that people have learned a little bit about booster seats. Um, I want to thank thank you and Safe Kids Pima County and your camera person who has been excellent. We really appreciate it. Um, and also uh, Safe Kids Worldwide. So if you haven't already liked the Safe Kids Worldwide Facebook page, please do. We'd love to have you join us. And we want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us for Facebook Live. So have a great day. Stay safe. 
Stay safe and everybody always ride properly buckled up.